Three, two. Welcome back to the Scorecard Sense. It's Tim and Jacko, and we are looking at part two of How to Progress, where we are looking at combining our locker tools. Before Tim tells you exactly what we're going to get into today, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss any more of our content. Tim. So last, in the last lesson we looked at the individual tools that we have in the locker, isometrics, eccentrics, weighted, stability, assistance, levers and angles. They're all great. They're all amazing. And they, you can use them by themselves as great tools just to try and help your progression to move along and keep things going in the right direction. But they actually become really effective if you start to think about how you can combine the two together. It opens up loads of different training options and it really helps you to either make an exercise a little bit more difficult or a little bit easier so you can bridge the gap between movements or progressions that you're working on. But the second thing which we talk about loads is that just they're really effective at helping you to build general global capacity strength. Getting stronger is a key part of calisthenics. So if we combine these tools, we've got some options, we've got lots of things to play around with to keep us moving forwards. Yeah, we're gonna take you through some examples um, and we're just gonna show you these through whether it's a, a handstand, whether it's um, a back lever, whether it's a human flag, where you can combine one or more tools together. Like Tim says, just making that a little bit easier, a little bit harder. Um, and what we want you to do is take those principles that we go through in those examples away and then you can apply them to whatever it is that you're working on. If you need some help along those, you've got any ideas, go comment in below and go like, Jacko, Tim, I'm going to use these two tools for this purpose, this reason, do you think that's going to work? And we'll go yes or no, or give you some feedback. So we look forward to hearing from you on those. Well, let's get into these examples. So the first example we're going to use is the back lever and Tim's going to show us um, a combination of tools where we're going to be lowering down through a different range in the angle. We're going to be using um, a different lever length, so we're going to do tucked and single leg. Um, and then we're also it's going to be an isometric because we're going to hold that bottom position. So first one he's going to go, um, you're going to use the rings for these, you can do this on the bar. He keeps the knees tucked, uh, feet by his bum, knees close to his chest as possible. He's going to lower down slowly under control he's trying to make a five second lower and then he's going to hold this bottom position where the hip is in line with the shoulder and he's nice and flat i can eat my dinner off that flat back so holds that for five seconds as his isometry then pulls back up if you get good we can then start to just make this a little bit harder by extending one of those lever lengths out you're going to do the same thing he's going to lower down through a range full range of the of, of the angle so that lower he gets this starts to get harder and harder and harder he then keeps that hip in line with the shoulder and the foot, holds that for five seconds, and then he's Tim strong enough to pull himself back up. But for you, once you've held that five seconds, you might be dropping back down. And like we said, with these sort of eccentric works, the, the portion at the bottom we're gonna hold for a minimum of sort of five seconds, nice controlled lower down there. Um, and then we're trying to build up like something close to a minute's worth of tension total. You can do the same thing with the human flag, where we can go up to the top and then we can lower down in the tucked position, lower again under control, hold that bottom position. If you're good, you can then try and look at uh, taking out some of those lever lengths. So we could have one leg out on the human flag and lower down into it. You could even straddle and eventually you can bring those legs together. We're going to look at the active hang and the ways which we can progress this great foundation exercise for all of our pulling. If you're trying to work on muscle ups, if you're trying to work on pull ups or any variations, even if it's you starting out with your calisthenics journey, you need to get into more skin the cap progressions and your back lever, this is the foundation of all of those things. Sometimes we get to a point where it's actually feeling pretty comfortable. I'm going to get Jacko to go dead hang here and then he pulls into active hang. Shoulder blades go down, he's keeping a midsection tight, bums on, but he's basically trying to pull his shoulders away and down from his ears. That's our active position. If we can get that nailed, it might be you can spend a minute or so there. So we want to start to make that a bit more difficult. One of the ways is to just kind of load the single arm position. So this is pretty difficult and you've really got to work hard not to let your shoulder re like relax and unwind and, and lose tension through there. So we're going to hold that single arm position. That's a great progression for our flag. Now you might be saying that, well, I've got both of those sorted, but we can now use the weighted tool to make them a little bit more difficult. And I really like this as a finishing exercise. At the end of a session, you might go, right, I'm gonna put 20 kilos on or whatever you think I've you can manage. Tension, but yeah, obviously I can. For video purposes. I can do a lot more. And then just hang out there. And literally, can you go for a minute in active hang? It puts a load of strength development into mid-low traps, the rhomboids. There's great stuff around the back of the shoulder, which is retracting and depressing the shoulder blade. And that's what creates a load of stability and the foundation is now pulling. The last one, because we talk about combining tools, is a single arm with the belt, creates a load of stability. We let go of the bar. <laughs> The grip goes a little bit more with the one hand, sorry, we let go with one hand, we, we, the grip starts to slide, but we're having to work really hard to recreate that tension, keeping the abs tight, shoulders staying super stable to stop it from winding. 
and there's loads of stuff to play around on that one. So just get these more in your program. It's building the foundations for so many exercises. Now, loads of you are enjoying working on your frog to handstand and eventually working on those handstand press ups. So, head of handstands at Scorecast, Tim is going to give us a nice demo of these. Um, and so, the tools we're going to look at is going to kick up and then we're going to look at um, adding an eccentric, so he's going to lower down under control, but we're going to have the assistance of the wall uh, for the first part. So, those two together. So, he's going to use the wall so he doesn't have to worry about the balance so much. He's also going to add some stability in there. And then he's going to lower down and control five, four, three, two, one, making sure that head goes down in front of the hands to make that triangle. On the way back up, he's then gonna dig his heels into the floor and try to help himself back up with his heels to pull almost as well as him driving himself up. So you can see that he's using his foot into the wall to help him with the pushing part of getting back up. He's working some lovely things there. We've got that eccentric on the way down. You could do these separately. You could have the eccentric on the way down on its own, put your feet down, kick back up again. Or we can have, as he did, the eccentric on the way down, a nice control, and then actually using those feet to try and help claw yourself back up the wall. The nice thing about that as well is, as long as you're conscious that you're keeping that body in that nice alignment, the wall's gonna help you to do that. These vertical pushing positions are so important in getting that frog stand to handstand progression. So if you can find the right progression of this exercise that's appropriate for you, it's an absolute winner. Yeah, so we've got eccentrics, we've got assisted, um, and then you've, you can do those on their own or you can do them together. So with that frog stand to handstand, one of the things we need to work on is strength out of real deep positions in your handstand push-up. So having your hands on the floor and taking your head down to the floor sometimes isn't quite good enough because you just don't get deep. So what we can do is you can put your hands up on a box to effectively raise the height of the floor, but then you can take your head past that position. So you go into a deep position, hands are almost coming towards the shoulders and then having the strength to drive out of there. It might be that you can't push out of that position, so you just use the eccentric part of that elevated position, put your feet back down, and then kick back up. We're gonna look at the planche now, a really popular exercise, but one that's really difficult to build up to specific or applied strength that you need for it. So, um, Tim, first thing we're gonna do is uh, looking at this planche lean, and we've, sh we've shown you a video before with a planche lean for beginners. Uh, planche work, but now we're going to elevate the box, uh, the feet up with a box. So the box now puts his Tim's body, you see his shoulders, hip and, and feet on a nice straight line horizontal sort of parallel to the floor. If his feet were down, his body would be at an angle. So now we're raising that up just that initially makes it a little bit harder. The box is also a nice stable base that actually makes it a little bit more um, comfortable or it's not challenging his stability. It's a stable base for him to apply force from his feet. He's gonna now then go into that lean position where he rolls over on those toes, so he's not really using his feet at all. He's pushing the shoulder blades up and he's pushing that core, trying to keep that in that sort of hollow body position, but getting that hip, shoulder, and ankle all in a nice straight line. He holds that there as an isometric. So we've got the elevated position, the levers and angles. We've got um, the isometric aspect of it, and we've got a little bit of extra stability from the, bo the box because it's not gonna move around. We can make this exercise just a tiny bit harder and just adjust the difficulty of it by taking away the box, which was nice and stable, and replacing it by a stability ball. So we have the height of the ball, which is gonna be the same as, as the box, keeping then the body in that nice straight line position. But what's nice about the ball is it allows Tim to be able to roll backwards and forward to find a more difficult position as that ball gets further away from his center point, it's gonna make it more difficult. It also has a stability challenge because that ball, as you can see, is gonna start moving about and then he can actually make it harder for himself by going onto one leg rather than having both leg on there. So now, not only are we elevated and holding that isometric position, we're really challenging the stability of the whole exercise because his, the point of contact he's got with his foot is gonna be moving about and therefore he's got to create that stability and that's where we see some a little bit of shaking from the upper body because there's, that stability challenge has increased. Same exercises with the box, but change that tool of adding um, more of a stability challenge or taking away the stability from the feet and all of a sudden that exercise becomes a lot more difficult. So with planche training, once you've got that planche lean sorted, it, you really have to get into the position where you're able to hold a tucked position um, and that's when your plank training really starts and that can be a difficult step to take so we can use the band to hold, help your hips in that position so getting into a tuck position knees tucked shoulders forward but the band just helping to keep those hips in line with those shoulders before you can work on being able to take away that band. 
That then really gives you, hopefully, some really good principles around combining tools together. And just one little point for me to finish off with, a lot of those tools they're adding onto either an eccentric or an isometric. And the key bit that I need you to remember about them is we need to create tension. You don't get strong just by falling down out of position. So five seconds for those eccentrics as a minimum, five seconds for those isometrics as a minimum, and you've got to be in control and creating tension. That's my take home message, Tim. I like that one. The other thing is to be humble enough to make sure you're right, oh, you get the right I love level. that. <laughs> make sure that the progressions that you pick, if you constantly try and do something too hard, leave your ego at the door. Let's just build it back in so you can actually get an opportunity to train with great technique, great form, and it's just the long-term benefits of that are gonna be way more significant. Yeah. And the last point for me is just to go back to remember, you can combine these tools, your objectives are to bridge the gap between two movements, so you smaller progressions yeah. are making something easier, all a bit more difficult. And the second thing is, is just think about getting that capacity strength in the system. You've gotta get strong if you're gonna progress forwards with calisthenics, and these are great tools to make that process even more effective. Cool, so if you haven't yet subscribed, click up by Tim's head. If you haven't got our free beginner's guide, that one's down there. And um, there's a little bit about that planche work in there. So if you've missed uh, out on our beginner's planche uh, video, that one is down there. So until next time, class dismissed.